Welcome back to the RAS American College of Surgeons and Behind the Knife Journal Club on Landmark Papers in Surgery. I'm Tammany Yeager, an Endocrine Surgery Fellow at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. Today, I will be reviewing a randomized control trial to observe how autofluorescence-based detection of the parathyroid glands during total thyroidectomy influences parathyroid preservation and postoperative hypocalcemia risk. A known complication of total thyroidectomy surgery is inadvertent damage of the parathyroid glands, which can lead to profound postoperative hypocalcemia. Finding these parathyroid glands intraoperatively is crucial. Postop hypocalcemia is the most common complication after a total thyroidectomy. In fact, up to 30% of patients experience this, and it's permanent in 1 to 4% of these cases. The clinical implications of hypocalcemia include rather severe symptoms, an increased hospital length of stay, and even after discharge, these patients require prolonged surveillance, oftentimes as an outpatient. Previous articles have described that parathyroid tissue, when exposed to intraoperative near-infrared autofluorescence, also known as NIRAF, this shows that the glands emit autofluorescence 2 to 11 times more than surrounding tissues. Here's a set of images to provide you with a little more context on NIRAF. This was published in the Journal of Innovative Surgical Sciences by the authors listed on the left. The first set of images shows the autofluorescence of a left superior parathyroid gland in situ with an unaided view as compared to the visualization with NIRAF. The images below this demonstrate that this autofluorescence persists even after removing its blood supply. So going back to the study, this was a randomized control trial. It involved three centers in France, including eight experienced surgeons, and this they described as surgeons who perform over 25 thyroidectomies per year. The data collection range was between September 2016 to October 2018, and this included a six-month follow-up. Inclusion criteria were adult patients who underwent total thyroidectomy with or without a lymph node dissection and exclusion criteria included any operation less than a total thyroidectomy, such as a lobectomy or isthmusectomy. Those were excluded, in addition to those with pre-existing parathyroid disease. Those patients that met inclusion criteria underwent a total thyroidectomy with or without the NIRAF imaging system. The primary outcome was postoperative hypocalcemia, meaning a corrected calcium of less than eight, and secondary outcomes were the number of parathyroid glands identified, the rates of parathyroid autotransplantation, and lastly, inadvertent parathyroid gland resection. Overall, 245 patients were randomly assigned, 123 in the NIRAF group and 122 in the standard care group. A total of 241 patients were analyzed for the primary outcome. 121 in the NIRAF group, and 120 in the standard care group. There were no losses in the follow-up period. Four exclusions occurred after randomization. The reasons for this were listed as one patient changed their mind, another had a lobectomy performed instead of a total thyroidectomy, and lastly mentioned was a retrospective identification of parathyroid disease. The study groups were well-balanced on baseline characteristics. The author comments that the duration of operations was significantly longer in the NIRAF group than in the standard care group, but the difference is only nine minutes. They do report a p-value of 0 0.002. Here are the results from the paper. In the initial analysis, the presence of postoperative hypocalcemia was significantly lower in the NIRAF group. The NIRAF group also had a higher number of parathyroid glands identified intraoperatively, less inadvertent resection of the glands, and required fewer autotransplantations. After accounting for surgeon heterogeneity and adjusting for confounders in a multivariate, the use of NIRAF was associated with a significantly lower risk of post-op hypocalcemia than without using it. The final diagnosis age, BMI, and preoperative corrected calcium levels were not significantly associated with postoperative hypocalcemia. 
A limitation of the study was the variability of contributions from each center. Of the three centers included in this study, one center actually contributed 81% of patients. The authors tried to account for this in their statistical analysis, and additionally, their requirement of a high volume surgeon to be included also may have avoided the bias. This study shows the utility of autofluorescence in the identification of parathyroid glands and the reduction of postoperative hypocalcemia risk after total thyroidectomy. I'm Tammany Yeager, an endocrine surgery fellow at Mount Sinai Hospital. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on Twitter at Tammany K. Don't forget to review the content on this week's score module for parathyroid. Thanks for listening.